DraftKings shares were jumping after the company reported fiscal 2022 fourth quarter results. So let's take a look at the big picture of these earnings results and determine why the market loved the results so much. Uh, revenue increased by 81% to 855 million, mainly driven by new markets. If you're not aware, DraftKings is an online gaming company, so it must get approval before it's allowed to enter new states. So it needs to get approval state by state by state. Its loss per share improved to 53 cents from 80 cents in the same quarter last year. This is something I've been waiting to see with DraftKings stock. Up until this point, it had just been growing revenue, adding new markets, but at the same time, just losing more and more money on the bottom line not demonstrating very much economies in scale here but this is the one of the first times i've seen the company improve on its bottom line it's live in 20 states now with online sportsbook and it's making slower progress with iGaming it's live in just five states with iGaming it launched in ohio on january 1st 2023 and the results from that market are not yet included in DraftKings uh, figures just yet. And one more thing to recall is that uh, between the third and fourth quarter, DraftKings uh, experienced a devastating loss when it tried to legalize sports betting in California it put the measure on the ballot and voters in California resoundingly rejected the measure making it less not only was it you know rejected but it was rejected by a wide margin which makes it less likely that it's going to get passed anytime in the near future so 2023 California could be off the table. Maybe in 2024 or 2025, DraftKings could think about getting into California market with sports betting. Now, California is a huge market, and DraftKings would love to be in that market, but it's a difficult market to get into because of all the existing uh, constituents in terms of gaming operators. California has a lot of uh, card rooms, uh, Indian casino, uh, tri tribal casinos, um, horse racing tracks that all of those three work to block any kind of new gaming coming into the state because of course that would be taking away customers from their own uh, establishments and they don't want some newcomer to come in and take market share monthly oh uh, they launched the sportsbook and iGaming in Ontario Canada in May of 2022 this was huge for them the region represents 40 percent of Canada's population and this took them from just a domestic uh, company to now they've got international operations there in the US and in Canada it opens up to potential more international expansion in the future Monthly unique players increased by 31% to 2.6 million. And ARPMUP, which stands for Average Revenue Per Monthly Unique Player, increased by 42% to $109 in the fourth quarter, up from the fourth quarter of 2021. So not only is DraftKings adding more people, more unique players, but they're getting each player to engage more with the platform. So double good news there for DraftKings investors. Uh, it Because of the good quarter, DraftKings is raising the full year 2023 revenue guidance up to $2.95 billion. This was up from a previous estimate of $2.9 billion. But the bigger upgrade came from its adjusted EBITDA guidance of it, it upgraded it to a loss of 400 million. This is improved from a previous expectation of a loss of 525 million. So a much bigger improvement in adjusted profitability uh, compared to the the revenue line item. So overall, really good news for DraftKings stock investors. Now DraftKings, I had uh, DraftKings as uh, not a stock to buy for 2023. My recommendation was that 
the company was growing revenue fast, but it was losing a lot of money. And so for investors to wait before purchasing this stock, I would still advise investors to wait before purchasing this stock. I still wouldn't recommend the stock as a buy right now. Although this quarter gave DraftKings a big step up in that regard, showing me that they can reduce the loss on the bottom line as revenue grows is impressive. And the fact that they're they're raising their adjusted EBITDA guidance for 2023 was also impressive, but it's still too early for me to recommend the stock as a buy. All right, that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate your viewership. I hope you'll tune in next time for another video. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.